Hey everybody, Skylar again, digging through my lock collection for you. Today we're going to be looking at a few different jail locks. So we have a Folger Adams, sorry, Folger Adam, singular, not an Adams right, which is a different kind of lock altogether. We have a Brinks, and we have an Asa. Now, what you're going to notice immediately is that all of these locks are significantly larger than their normal world counterpoints. Uh, this is for a number of reasons. Durability, uh, the fact that the keys for them also have to be significantly larger, which makes them more difficult to copy out of found materials, a lot more difficult to hide, especially if you're hiding it on your person. Um, and finally, just using the sort of found objects that you could fashion tools out of to pick a lock like this is very difficult. In fact, using normal lock picks to pick a lock like this is also very difficult. The force involved, the, um, the, the tension involved, so on and so forth, everything just scales up and makes the whole process a lot more difficult without a ton of additional engineering on top of it. So we're just scaling up. Now that said, we also have the ASA twin system put into a larger format, but this is just a normal ASA lock, pretty sure, yep. Um, so just a normal ASA lock, but put into a much larger housing so that it would fit the uh, same footprint as a normal J lock. So you don't necessarily need to have everything sized up. This is a very difficult lock to reproduce a key for, to pick, so on and so forth, even without being at scale. Okay, these also have some uh, deeper meanings to me. The ASA was one of the first high security locks I ever owned. I don't have a key for it, of course, because I was just trading and swapping, and uh, this is what I was able to get out of the deal. But it was one of the first times that I had a high security lock in my hand, and it was in a really weird format, so that was additionally cool for me as an early collector. The Folger Adam had a twin that took the same key, and I destroyed that lock with one of the very first cutaways I ever attempted. And finally, the Brinks probably has the most sentimental value to me. This was the lock that I used as an anvil when I made my fiance's engagement ring. I made it by hand, it's not the nicest thing in the world, but at the time what I could afford was to take a silver quarter and turn it into a ring to propose with, and this was the anvil that I pounded out and shaped it on. So this holds a special place in my heart, of course. Okay, so let's uh, tear apart the Folger Atom. I'll show you some of the close-ups on the uh, imprints of the ring on the Brinks. Um, and we won't dig too deep into the ass, but I'll at least give you a close-up on the face of it. Let's dig in. All right, first we're just going to have a quick look at the face of the Brinks. You can see here that I have marked it over and over and over again as I just pounded and rotated the, uh, the ring as I went along. So nothing too crazy going on, just a little piece of my heart there. And now we have our Asa. Now this is a normal size twin in this larger footprint. Um, I'm going to see if I can't open the back of it here. Um, but you can see at the very least at the back that it is quite clearly just a normal size cylinder in the significantly larger footprint. And finally, of course, is the Folger Atom. So, here's the key for this bad boy. Pretty honking. Um, now, what you might be able to see already is the ball bearings in the bottom of each pin chamber. But we're gonna pull this thing apart and have a look at it anyway. Okay, just gotta get the screws finished off the back of the lock. I've obviously pre-loosened some of these screws, trying to learn a tiny bit when I shoot new things. I still want you to see me disassembling it, but why watch me struggle? All right, so I've taken the screws off and <laughs> I am immediately discovering that this is greasy as heck, a lot of oil in there. So I'm just going to misalign this. What I found the first time around is that this little USB battery charger works wonders as a plug follower for this massive plug. There we go. And let's have a look at our key pins. Oh, oh, oh my goodness. 
Okay. Let's see if they'll even, <laughs> they won't even come out. All right, let's pop one up here and pull this out. So, as you can see, they're actually flat on both sides, and that's because, if I can get it to go, there we go, each one of them is capped with a small ball bearing. The ball bearing can uh, go for a very long time, an incredibly long time, without real wear, and it will continue to function um, without any trouble, so that is primarily for wear resistance. Uh, the pins themselves, I don't know this for sure, but they might be steel, which would make for a much more difficult drilling procedure. And of course, everything else is just upsized dramatically. All right, let's pop a couple of our driver pins out to have a look at those. What we're gonna see right off the bat here is that they are really pretty mushroom pins. I'm gonna zoom a little bit, see if I can't get a little bit tighter on that. There we go. And then again, let's grab the next one. Another very lovely little mushroom pin. And another, but you'll also see that the mushrooms only appear at the absolute end of the taper. And thus, they are actually able to get five mushroom pins in there without any trouble as to the wear of the system. So if these were spool pins or very large mushroom pins, it would make it a lot more difficult because um, the lock at rest would have a lot of slop to it. Note the different lengths of the driver pins. Those will correspond to the heights of the key pins, and in that way they're actually going to be balanced, so we have balanced pin stacks in each chamber. All right, I am going to get this back together off camera so that you guys don't have to deal with it, um, and this is going to be a sloppy mess anyway. All right. Put the backpack on before we test to make sure everything works. Oh my god, and then after that, I am going to go wash my hands and clean this nice hope chest off. And hopefully my fiancé won't see that I got everything filthy and leave me before we get married. That would be, I don't know, I'm not 100% on the definition of irony, but it might be ironic. Okay, make sure it works. Aha, fabulous, we're all back together. I'm gonna go wash my hands and I'll see you guys next week. Thank you so much.